Okay, it looks like we are live. We are live in a couple of minutes early. This was a special broadcast scheduled for 5.15 p.m. on the East Coast, 5.15 p.m. on the East Coast, special emergency broadcast, and there have been some issues. There have been some issues, folks, in some of the forums and, and uh, on YouTube and just some issues all the way around. And, of course, Rush Limbaugh passed away yesterday, and uh, he, was, he was a force. I'll tell you what, he saved AM radio. He absolutely saved AM radio, and, and you could say that uh, he was the pioneer of uh, alternative media, if you will, alternative media. Maybe we wouldn't have a lot of the opportunities we have right now <clears throat> if it weren't for Rush Limbaugh. For him, there were just three major networks really dominating everything. And, uh, yeah, he kind of opened the door for, for a, lot of, uh, a lot of folks to have a voice. So, God rest his soul. Lance is in the house. Blue's in the house. Let me see if I can pull this up on the uh, laptop and get, uh, get things going here. <clears throat> And I got to go roundabout way here to get to it. Brianna was here; she can get to it right away. There I go. All right. And uh, Stig was first, actually. And uh, let's see, Kyle is in the house, and uh, Rocky Raccoon is in the house. And so Bitcoin is over fifty thousand dollars. It looks like holding holding over fifty thousand dollars pretty handily. Don't know if we'll have a major pullback or not. <clears throat> In the past, we would have had a major pullback by now, but it looks like the major pullbacks might be a thing of the past. Maybe the best we can hope for is like a 10% pullback or so for folks that want to buy a dip. But it looks like um, Bitcoin is stabilizing and going higher. It looks like it's stair-stepping its way higher with minimal pullbacks. So, uh, what do you guys think? Do you think that, um, which would you rather have? A day date, something like this, or one Bitcoin? You could buy that day date 40 for list, and you could probably buy a, a lady date for your significant other. <laughs> for the price of one Bitcoin right now, you do a little bit of horse trading, a little bit of wheeling, dealing with the AD. What do you guys think? You think you could get a day date 40 and a gold Rolex for the young lady, for the lady, a two for deal, two gold Rolexes for one Bitcoin. What do you guys think? Is that doable? If not today, maybe wait a week or so with when Bitcoin's like over 60,000, then I'm sure you could do it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could do it. Maybe have some change coming back. What do you guys think about that? So some folks were p posting some ugly watches on a couple of the uh, Facebook groups, the watch Facebook groups. <clears throat> and somebody said that it, it, as to whether or not a watch is ugly or not, that's subjective. <laughs> I don't know. I think some of these watches you could certainly look at objectively and say they're absolutely ugly. So here's a uh, stunner that is not ugly. This is the 002, which is on wrist. The 002 on wrist today. Let's if I get that in better focus there. There we go. That's looking pretty stunning. Pretty stunning. And the strap is by HD Straps. HD Straps, the 002 on wrist. So let me know. Kyle is in the house. Kyle, what are you thinking about the latest uh, run-up on Bitcoin? And where do you think we're headed? And do you think there will be any major pullbacks? Kyle's in the house. He says, I remember when we did these videos and BTC was like 5 to 10K. People were saying they would take the watch over BTC. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would have been a case where they, were not, they did not choose wisely. Remember that scene in um, one of the Indiana Jones movies where the guy says, he did not choose wisely. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well, we've had people almost all along when we've done these. We, we did the first one I think we did was $10,000 where we suggested, would you buy a Submariner? Because for 10000 at that point, you could buy a Submariner, you know, a decent Submariner used probably for around 10000 If you could get one from an AD, 10000 Right, right in that neighborhood, we we did. That was the first question we asked when it was ten thousand. Would you buy a sub or would you buy the the uh, Bitcoin, one Bitcoin? And a lot of people said they'd take the Submariner. Absolutely, they did. I hope they like that Submariner. Turned out to be a really expensive choice. Blues in the house. Bitcoin way better than getting gold. Gold is falling down and potential bear market now. There you go. But would you would you take would you buy one Bitcoin right now, or would you buy this this gold Rolex, that stunner right there? What would you get? And let's say let's say you could get the day date forty, a faux pay, a faux pay, and they'd probably throw in a date just, I would guess, for the price of a uh, one Bitcoin right now. What do you guys think? What do you think? Uh, let's see here. Stig's in the house. Uh, I would take the most expensive Grand Seiko money can buy and sit waiting, sit watching Craig <laughs> getting even richer every day. <laughs> Stig's in the house. Kyle's in the house. He says, I wouldn't be shocked if it pulled back to 30K or so. I'll tell you that, that would be pretty wild. I don't think it's going to do it though, Kyle. I don't think it's going to do it. I think the big money's coming into play. And I think the big money um, isn't going to let it pull back that far. I think they're buying the dips. They're buying up the dips. I think that's what we're seeing. I think we're seeing big money buying up the dips. Blues in the house, I'd go for the BTC long-term hold. You know, it's funny. Uh, as the price gets higher, <laughs> for some reason, Bitcoin, by the way, it just slipped below 52000 It's 51901 Uh, uh as as the price gets higher, for some reason, Bitcoin gets more attractive. I, I don't get that. I don't understand. Back when it was four thousand dollars, you know, you couldn't give Bitcoin away, right? And and you know, I was begging, begging, and pleading with people to buy it. I bought one, uh, one Bitcoin live on the show for four thousand, if you guys remember. And I was begging and pleading with people. I said, "Hey, get at least one Bitcoin. If you don't have one Bitcoin, just get at least one." And people were like. Ah, I don't think so. Now that it's over fifty thousand dollars, some people are. I'm getting. I'm getting messages from people saying, "How exactly? How do I buy Bitcoin?" I don't understand why they're buying it now and they didn't want to buy it when it's four thousand. I'm. I'm just confused. Some things just confuse me. What is twenty twenty four going to look like? Whoa, things could be pretty wild by then. I think the, the, the litmus test for Bitcoin is going to be this year, 2021. I think this is where it's going to have to fish or gut bait. If, if the big money folks keep piling in and it becomes acceptable for institutions and high net worth individuals and, and corporations to have it on their balance sheet, and I'm not talking about just a few here and there. I'm talking about just widespread. It just becomes acceptable for this this to be the case, to be the norm. Then I think we're fine. I think we're off to the races. I don't think we're ever going to see any major pullbacks again if that becomes the case, because it'll start stabilizing and it'll just keep going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. I think that's what'll happen. I think that's where we're headed if that transpires and it looks like it might be the case we might be headed that direction if a few more major companies announce that they've put significant portions on their balance sheets i think we're off to the races uh, and then if countries start putting it in their reserve for the reserve assets you know uh, if a couple of countries start announcing Hey, we've put Bitcoin in our reserve. Uh, the game on, okay, at that point. The game on. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's the deal. Um, Lance is in the house, sent a link to a bargain GS9F date 8. Okay, we'll look. We will look. Let's cut to uh, another bargain. There's the uh, 231 stunner bargain. That's a bargain. 
That's one of the best uh, sport model Grand Seikos that they make. I mean, they've been making it for years. And guess what? When you do it right, you don't have to change it up. You don't have to change it up when you did it right in the first place. So here is the unit. Here's the unit. Buy it now, 1500 USD. I kind of like it. I like the, the, the lugs. I like the case shape. I kind of like the bracelet. I wonder what size it is. I like it. Lance is coming up with some really cool oh, a repair report. I'm not so sure I like that. Maybe they just put a battery in it. I don't know why they would have to repair a, a, a 9F movement watch. That concerns me, but I guess it's okay. I kind of like it. Okay, let's see what the size is. Let's see what the size is. Lance is coming up with some good stuff here. I, I, I got to give Lance credit where credit is due. 37 mil, so that's not terrible. 37 mil. Average signs of wear on case and bracelet. I'll grant it that. The bracelet that came on the watch was too short, so I sent it to Seiko for more links, and they gave me a brand new one. Wow. Although there are, although there are micro scratches on the crystal and our hand shows some tarnishing, I decided not to have them replaced yet. Overall, watch is fantastic shape. Enjoy a pleasant uh, domestically sold only Japanese model without having to pay the import tax. Oh, so I guess it's in the U.S. Okay. All right. So I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, I can see the tarnishing now on the hour hand. That's a shame. That's probably why the price is, is attractive on it. Not bad, though. Not bad. <clears throat> the lovely lady Brianna's in the house, and her latest video... I think is approaching 30,000 views. Uh, let me see if I can um, pull that up. Uh, give me a second here. I'll see if I can pull up her latest video. Uh, da -da -da, I'm going to Twitter. I'm going to the Brief It Dance page on Twitter. Tweeter. Um... Oh, come on. It's asking me to sign up. What happens if I close that? Maybe I don't have to sign up. Okay. Here we go. Here is the lovely Lady Brianna's Twitter. Twitter. Twitter, Twitter. 30,000. She hit 30,000 views. We're going to have to update her website where we have the number of views. 30,000 views on her latest video, and it is about Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Two thumbs up for the lovely lady, Brianna. Briefitdance.com on all the platforms. Shout out to lovely lady, Brianna. Warren Buffett says Bitcoin is a mirage and has no value. There, uh, there doesn't own any and said he never will. That's right. He's been, he's been talking trash about uh, Bitcoin for many years. Of course, he, he has a lot of money invested in banks. So think about that. Uh, sounds like he's got a dog in the fight. He doesn't want his banks to be disrupted, and they are going to be disrupted. So, yeah. <clears throat> but I wouldn't be surprised if Warren Buffett has bought some Bitcoin in the background and hasn't told anybody about it, because he's not an idiot. He's not an idiot. But, of course, publicly, he has to uh, try to try to dampen it down because it's uh it's going for his banks going for his banks that's what bitcoin's doing uh let's see here uh the 231 is a true bargain though unfortunately not over here where you will pay 25 percent import tax thing so i couldn't just ship it to you you couldn't just pay me in bitcoin and i could just ship it to you and nobody would have to know the wiser we couldn't do that Boy, I guess I shouldn't talk publicly about doing such things, huh? Brief at Dances in the house. I like I like the Bitcoin pen. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I think you have one. Don't you have one? 
Yeah, I think Bree has one too. Kyle's in the house. Uh, Craig, I know you don't believe in altcoins, but by the next halving in 2024, what do you, what do you expect the altcoin scene to look like? Which ones will still exist? I don't think any of the current ones will exist. Uh, maybe, maybe Ethereum will still be around, but I don't think any of the others will. They turn over pretty rapidly. Uh, so yeah, I would doubt any of them would survive. And long term, I don't think that uh, Ethereum is going to survive either. It doesn't make any sense. The whole project doesn't make any sense. So I think the only one that has legs is uh, Bitcoin. That'd be my guess, Kyle, on that. Kevin's in the house. Craig, would you ever buy an apartment building? Uh, probably not at my late stage in life now. I'm not looking for any new investments and any new headaches. And, and apartment buildings can be can absolutely be headaches, dealing with all the tenants and all that sort of thing. So probably not. Uh, let's see. The faux pay in, in GS look bronze, or is it just me? Wow, they look like bronze? Hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe the colors are off a little bit. They look okay in my monitor, but uh, yeah, anything is possible. Anything is possible... And that's why you have to see these in person, especially uh, the OO2. You really have to see it in person because cameras, cameras have a lot of trouble capturing how stunning, how stunning the OO2 is. There, it's in focus. So yeah, uh, Brianna, did you notice I've got your logo up again? I've got the Mid Atlantic TV. Uh, TV logo, and I've got the um, Brief It Dance logo. Did you notice that, folks? What do you think about that? I updated the software on the ATEM Mini Pro. They came out with a new model. I think it's called the ATEM Mini Extreme or something. Wow, big upgrade on this switcher. It's got eight inputs. It's got a whole bunch of features. I don't think I'll be upgrading right now because this fits my needs just fine. But uh, anyway, oh, update on the um, on the ambulance. I didn't get it. I got outbid. I got outbid. It sold for twenty two thousand six hundred. I was bidding against this individual, and I dropped out at uh, twenty two thousand four hundred. He got it at twenty two thousand six hundred plus the buyer's premium of twenty eight twenty five. So he paid more than twenty five thousand dollars for the rig and the only way I'll end up getting this is if he reneges and doesn't pay doesn't settle within the time frame then I might get another shot at it but otherwise if he pays it's his truck he got a nice one he got a nice one I had a limit the uh, you know uh, to where I didn't want to go any higher and it hit that limit and uh, it's his truck it was only he and I bidding against each other so there you go. He got a nice truck, but it does have 6,000 hours on it. If that thing had, it's got 56,000 miles on it. If it had like 3,000 hours on it, I would have probably gone a couple thousand dollars higher bidding. But with 6,000 hours, I think I I went as far as I want to go on, on that one. So can't get them all. Can't win them all. I'll keep an eye out. Maybe we'll stumble across another stunner but that one that's a that was quite a beast with the brawn uh box on the back that's a super chief model that's their top of the line that's a heck of a truck heck of a truck uh let's see looks more yellow on the close-up shot yeah maybe that camera is doing better as far as the coloring interesting Interesting. In the monitor, this one looks okay, but it is what it is. So, what else is going on? It's been a while since we had a little broadcast. What else is going on? Can you guys give me any updates on, on anything else? Um, oh, I am going to have a guest here in the studio on, I believe, Tuesday, I have a client coming. I think he's coming on Tuesday. Uh, Charlie 
from uh, Frederick Fence Company. Uh, he's actually the the son of the founder of the company, and they've been in business a long time. And so he's going to come, and we're going to talk about uh, his business, how he built his business over many many decades, and uh, what what they're all about. Frederick Fence Company. So that's going to be kind of fun. You guys can learn a bit from an entrepreneur how he built a successful business. We're going to interview him a little bit. So, yeah. Um, did you call the Rolex 80? Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I did talk to someone at the AD. Was it yesterday or day before yesterday? We think. Might have been yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And they were going to call me back and nothing. I haven't heard a word. I haven't heard a word, so I'm sitting here waiting by the phone, and they haven't bothered to call me back, so there you go. It uh, it looks more yellow. Okay, we read that. Uh, da, da, da. Are you getting this day date? Um, let's see. Let's take a vote. Let's take a vote in the chat. Okay, folks. Should I get... Should I get that day date 40 right there, that one right there, or should I get one more Bitcoin. Should I buy another Bitcoin at $50,000? Should I do that? Or should I get that day date right there? Let me know in the chat. Say uh, D for day date and B for Bitcoin. D for day date and B for Bitcoin. Everybody cast their votes now. And we'll see what the voting says. Uh, let's see, MGR 1911, the new 36 millimeter day dates have no loom. I think they've got some, um, I think they've got some dials that have loom, don't they? I'd be surprised if they don't have at least a couple with loom. That would be a total fail. Losing the house, buy a Bitcoin at 50K live. One Bitcoin for sure, says Bree. Daniel Lee says B for Bitcoin. Refit Dance says B uh, for Bitcoin. Lance says D. He wants me to buy the day date. I would buy the watch and wait for a pullback on the BTC. <laughs> uh, the beat that might not happen. Uh, Kyle says D only because you already have BTC. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let we got to assume I have neither. We got to assume I have nothing. So it's my. It, I have to buy one or the other. Can't have both. That's not fair. M R G nineteen eleven says D for day date. Uh, <laughs> I might buy the Bitcoin live on the channel. What do you think? Should I do that? I'm gonna have to move some money into my account. Actually, I could buy it live. I could buy it live in my BlockFi account. The problem is, because I do have enough money in there to buy it, but they've got high fees to, to buy Bitcoin in, the, in, in BlockFi. The fees are pretty high. So I don't... Uh, if you were no corner, the BTC, uh, there you go. That's right, BTC all the way. Yep, so those, those who voted B for Bitcoin, you are the ones that are correct. The ones including Lance that said D for day day, they would be that would be choosing poorly. You have a choice. You can choose wisely or choose poorly. That would be a poor choice. Would be buying the day date at this point in time. Be better off to be patient, patient, my friend, and let that uh, let that let that Bitcoin continue to run. Hey, it's been on a run, and as uh, Crypto Zombie says. The trend is your friend until the end. So follow the trend. The trend is up. Stick with it. Stig's in the house. Payment is not the problem here when buying. It is the custom. There is one horror story about a poor fellow buying a gold Rolex for his wife in the U.S. and had to pay $18,000 fee in Denmark? Holy cow. 18000 
Well, Stig, what happens if you fly here and you buy a watch and then you wear it on your wrist back? Do they still nab it? Do they still like like channel that? And and uh, could you wear like a real cheap watch here and then come and then fly back with a nice watch on your wrist? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> wow, that's pretty wild. Uh, Daniel Lee's in the house. You could buy multiple day dates with one BTC in the near future. Buying BTC is a no-brainer. Daniel says, buy the BTC. Whoa. Okay. I hear you. I do hear you. I have to say, <clears throat> I'm not all in on BTC. I, I, a large percentage of my net worth is in BTC at this point, just because it's run up so much. But I started out with only maybe 10% or something or even less than that in BTC. Actually, way back in the beginning when I first started, it was a lot less than that. Then it got to be about 10% for a while. And then here lately, it's just shot up to where the percentage is significantly higher. But, you know, I haven't sold any of my real estate to buy Bitcoin. I haven't sold stocks to buy Bitcoin. I did sell some stocks and go into cash. I'm sitting on a fair amount of cash right now, waiting for a pullback in the stock market, which hasn't happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm still waiting. But uh, I, I have not done like some Bitcoiners and gone like all in, just put everything in Bitcoin. I haven't done that. But I feel that I have plenty, that I don't really need more. If it does what it's supposed to do, we're, we're, we're going to be... We're going to have plenty of Bitcoin. So let's see. Um, Craig, when are you buying the Rolex? Because I've been waiting years now to watch this day date, Derek, in the house. That's a good question. When are you going to get yours? That I mean, you've been obsessed with it for years, right? So when are you going to get yours? I think that's the, the real relevant question here. Lance says, sent a link to a stunning Rolex turnograph. Okay, we will look. I like those. Uh, whenever you sold your last 88 Rolex, you told me you were buying one more new. <laughs> Actually, I didn't say that. Actually, I didn't say that. Okay, let's go and, um, and find this link. Da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, the reason I sold the Date 8 is because I wasn't wearing it. So why would I buy another one if I wasn't wearing it in the first place? Uh, that's the question. Okay. Excuse see, we don't have, I don't keep watches around that I don't wear. All right, here we go. Here is a cool watch. This is cool. I have, you know, Lance is digging up some cool watches. This is cool. By any measure, this is cool. Wow, we got to take a look at that. Look at that. That is nice. Lance, Wow. Somebody should snap that up. That's a good-looking piece. Not sure about the light brown strap. I'd probably either have a dark brown or a black strap on it, but but that is cool. And do you see what I mean about a gold watch that it gets a patina to it and it's and it just still looks great? You know, it gets some wear and it still looks great. I mean, this one's got some wear. You can see it's got some wear on it. But you can also see that it is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Wow, we got to hover on that a moment. That is nice. That is nice. Can you imagine the money that these people are spending on these steel Rolexes and they could get this puppy and have a bunch of money left over? I'd rather have that and wear that any day than a Daytona. That's so much classier than a Daytona that it's not even a close call. Not even a close call. Um... Let's see, uh, that day date is 50K. No, it's not. That's the thing. You could probably get the day date 
and a gold like lady day might have to be stealing gold for the for the little lady right you could probably get two two stunning rolexes for the price of one bitcoin today that's probably what you could do and they might even throw in a faux pay bracelet in the mix too probably for the lady a faux pay for the lady um Ah, Lance says, now that I think about it, uh, just stay with BTC. The 002 is better than a day date anyways. <laughs> there you go. But Lance is, um, has rethought his position to, to a wiser position. I, see, I like that. I respect a, a young man that can knows when he's made a poor decision and can reverse course. And, and rever, rever, reverse course with rapidity, rapidly. Cause in the house, I'm the only one that envisions Eduardo pulling that watch off really well. Am I the only one that envisions Eduardo pulling that watch? I think anybody could pull off that. That turnograph is cool. I think it's cool. Now, is that 36 mil? Aren't they all 36 mil? I think it is. Um, Let's look at the stats. Look, look at the data on that. I think they're all 36 mil. I don't think they ever made a 34 mil turnograph. Um, let's see what they say here about it. Okay. Yeah, 36 mil. Um, wow, and it's 18 karat gold. It's not 14. It's 18 karat gold. That is really cool. That is really cool. Oh, it's a bid. Oh, okay. All right. Back up here. It's not forty-seven hundred dollars. It's it's that's the current bid. So yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't showing it. So yeah, that that it probably will go for. You know, probably eight or nine grand, I would think. It's not going to go for 4700 That would have been a, a, a good deal, 4700 I mislooked at that. I didn't. I wasn't wasn't on it, man. I, I wasn't on my game there. Uh, let's see here. Stig says, custom check everything. Even if you do not carry box and papers with you, they will take your Rolex from your wrist and check the serial number. And if it's from outside the EU, you are toast. Wow. Wow, it's like it's like it's like Germany, you know. Let me see your papers, your papers, old man. Wow, that's terrible. Kyle's in the house. Even though I really like the two three one, if I were Craig, I would have a rotation of day date and O O two, all gold rotation, and use the day date as your sport watch. Hmm, interesting, interesting, very interesting. They see the problem is I for my tired eyes the day date doesn't have enough legibility for me to use it as my sport watch. And also I'd be giving up the accuracy and the comfort of the 231. The 231 is is more comfortable on wrist even than my day date was. And it's of course a lot more accurate. So yeah, I'd be giving up a lot. So I think I think the um 231 is a good sport watch good sport watch and sometimes you don't want to be wearing all gold there are times when i meet with certain clients and things like that where i don't really want to push that power move too much right so sometimes you don't want to be wearing a, a, a power watch there are there are those circumstances let's see blues in the house um say that again craig your papers <laughs> let me see if your papers with that accent <laughs> Yeah. The, the the papers, old man. Where are your papers? And there's another one. Chi Chi Chong does sign the papers, old man. And they slap him around. Remember that, that bit by Chi Chi Chong? Sign the papers, old man. Oh, boy. Terrible. Um, where is Bree? Are you here? Bree was in the chat. Hey, you, you dilly-dallied. You should have chatted with her while she was here. She drops in and drops out. So you should chat with her while she's here. Kyle's in the house. 
for those meetings where where the ringer <laughs> winger <laughs> or or I thought you were going to say just don't bother with those meetings because they're not worth it. <laughs> if anybody has a problem with the solid gold watches, I probably shouldn't be meeting with them in the first place, right? It should be a little more of a meeting snob, a meeting snob. So what else is going on in the watch community? I haven't been paying much attention to Archie and all those people and all the drama and stuff, the dog man and all that stuff. What, what's been going on? Let me know in the chat. Update me. Has there been any drama in the, in the, watch, uh, in the watch world? I've just been keeping an eye on a few of the uh, groups on Facebook, and I haven't really been checking out any of the YouTube channels. So I don't really know. Uh, Stig's in the house. If things were not so bad here, I would have made contact to Steve a long time ago. Okay, there you go. Dog, <laughs> dog man is still a dog man. Uh, Blue says, I don't follow him. Okay. Uh, we'll see if anybody else has any updates. Um, I'm trying to think what else. What else? There's some things I was meaning to mention, and I'm not sure if I remembered them. I talked about the ambulance, why that didn't go through. Um, I had another conversation with the gentleman about the MCI, and I'm I'm starting to get a little bit uncomfortable about this this MCI. There's some things I like about it. But the guy seems to tell a lot of stories, and I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I really like the walnut. I like all the walnut cabinetry and everything. It's It, it was done by Angola Coach, which they do top-of-the-line work back in the day. You can see it's got a full-size side-by-side refrigerator, all walnut trim even on that. It's It's a nice rig. It's got the Series 60 Detroit diesel. It's got steering on the rear tag axle, which is interesting. It's a factory raised roof MCI DL3. It's got a lot going for it. And the guy's sitting on it. The guy hasn't sold it. They're very hard to sell because, you know, in 1994, somebody's got to come up with the cash money. They're not going to get financing on that. And so... Somebody's got to come up with the cash. And plus, this guy's not doing a very good job of marketing it. This is the only place I've seen it is in this one Facebook group with some lousy photos. And he's not very good. And he's not a very good salesman either. When you talk to him on the phone, he's, I don't know, some things are a little bit questionable. So um, I'll put it this way. I haven't thrown the transmission out of my car trying to get down there to look at it. It's down in Florida. Uh, but I might sweat him a little bit. I might see if he doesn't sell it in the next month or two. I might see if he'll take 50 grand cash and see if we can do a deal. Say, hey, listen, I got to take it over to MCI, have them go through it, have them do a, a major service on it. That's going to be 20 grand. You know, you know that. You know good and well that's going to be 20 grand. So just slice 20 grand off that price. That 69.5 price, let's cut it down to 50 grand and I'll take care of the service. I think that's how that whole thing should go down. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Um, Craig, you bid for that MCI. How much? No, I haven't, met, haven't made an offer yet. We'll see. I would look for another ambulance, says Kevin. I am keeping an eye out for another high end. Uh, it's got to be a high end unit, it's got to be pretty low mileage. Uh, and they are around the, the guy up in, there's a dealer up in Pennsylvania, about an hour and 15 minutes from me or so that deals in ambulances. And he gets them in there from time to time. And he gets some medium duty ones in from time to time. I'm looking for a medium duty uh, ambulance because they have the carrying capacity that I need. And he might just get one. And the, the, the benefit of buying from him is it's not an as-is, where-is auction. I can go up there and examine the thing and all. He's a dealer, right? I can examine it. I can check it all out. I can, you know, he'll even give me a 60-day paper tag on it. I mean, you know, and he'll, he'll, he fully services them and everything. So it's not 
as risky as buying on the Gov Deals website, where you're basically buying the thing as is, sight unseen, right? Uh, unless you're willing to travel to to look at it wherever it may be. Uh, so there's some advantages to buying from the guy in Pennsylvania, and he he's he's got a sharp eye. He's picky. He doesn't buy junk. He, he most of the ambulances he buys are from like Southern Virginia or North Carolina. They're rust free units. Uh, he likes to buy them from rural uh, fire departments where they don't do as much idling uh, and they don't have as many engine hours on them. So he's kind of a he's kind of like a picker, right? He goes out and picks the the really nice ones, and then he marks them up, obviously, to make his profit and all that. But that's good. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. If I get a really, uh, I want a cream puff. If I get one, I want a really, really, really stand up, nice unit. Let's see here. Uh, so yes, Kevin, I am looking. Uh, I've got plenty of time. I don't really want to do anything until the fall. Uh, so I've got some time. Well, actually before the fall, but it was summertime. So I have some time to get whatever rig it is ready so that I can travel in it next winter. I want to travel in the rig next winter. I'm not going to spend another winter here. I've already decided that. I'm done with the whole winter thing here. Let's see. Stig's in the house. From here, it seems that the GS prices are steadily going up. If you ask me, I think that it's because of Craig Stig in the house. It may be. It may be. We've been talking about them a lot on this channel. It may be the case. So hopefully those of you that wanted them have gotten them and you've got them. Um, I think WorldCom bought MCI back in the old days, Craig. Okay, that's possible. Uh, let's see, Craig. Get an Airstream camper and use the Prius to tow it. Yeah, right. No, I don't want to go the whole trailer route. Um, uh, let's see. What is his info? Hunter says. I, I don't know what you mean. Did Video Bob sell his rig? Yes, he claims he sold it for $100,000. If he did, he got all the money because that's a two stroke coach. And there's one for sale right now uh, on in one of the Facebook groups uh, for $50,000, a similar coach to his that looks like it was in nicer shape than, than Video Bob's. And it's for sale for $50,000. it has got over-the-road air conditioning, as did Video Bob's. Uh, so a very similar rig. And it is for sale right now for 50000 bucks. So Video Bob basically got double the market value for his. And the problem with buying those two-stroke, uh, those the 8V92-powered uh, Prevo, is parts are getting harder to get. And those those that, that can be problematic, That that whole situation can be problematic so i don't think i would want a prevo with the two-stroke engine in it i'd want the detroit uh series 60 uh engine which came later so hunter says i'm in pa and i would like to buy an ambulance okay there you go harrisburg pa yeah the guy the dealer he is in um, lancaster i believe that area i think it's in that close to there so he's not that far from you. So just Google um, ambulance sales Pennsylvania, and you'll you'll find him. He's he's uh, he's got a decent operation. I would definitely talk to him. Good guy. Kevin's in the house. The high beats GS are out of control uh, price wise. Okay, where is Hunter Biden? Uh, Derek sally that was a different company mci mci was a communication company one of the larger carriers at, at the time before which work there you go see our wags is straightening people out our, our wags is lurking in the background to, to to help people out by the way our eggs what's your call now on bitcoin are we going to have any more major pullbacks or are we just going to stair step up with maybe minor let's say 10 percent pullbacks things like that Maybe even only 5% pullbacks. What do you think? Are we done with the 20, 30, 40% pullbacks? Is that a thing of the past? Let's get your thought on that. <laughs> Let's see. Michael's in the house. Where do you plan to spend the winter? South, where it's warm. <laughs> Somewhere warm. Uh, Kyle's in the house. Uh, Craig, did you see the movie The Long, Long Trailer? No, I didn't. 
I have to check it out. Kevin D., my thinking exactly. R. Wags, I just wanted to make sure you were listening, said Derek. I knew you were here. <laughs> Hunter's in the house. Thanks for the info. R. Wagster in the house. Yeah, Hunter, let us know if you get an Ambo uh, from that, that gentleman. Let us know. He, let me pull up his website. Give me a second here and see if I can find his website. Um I'm just Googling Ambulance Sales Pennsylvania, and I'll see if he comes up here. Here it is. Yep. Give me a second here, see if I can find his. Um, this is the company. All right. And we're going to go to his website here real quick. Here's his website. And see our inventory. Okay, and what you want to look for is you want to look for the ones that have the box that's at least six foot clearance inside that you can stand up inside. Some of these do not have that, like this one. You can see it's a shorter box. So you want one with the taller box, and let me find one that would be interesting. Okay, this one I think sold for about 28000 this Kodiak. That had a, a standing box in it. Um, and this one may or may not have one. I think it does. Here, the, here's, it was a four by four. I mean, my gosh, if I'd have seen this, I didn't see this. I would have been all over that puppy. Oh, but maybe that didn't have a standing uh, box. Let me see how tall the box was. I seem to remember maybe this didn't have a standing box. Um, here it goes. Yeah, 71.5 interior height. So it doesn't have a 72 inch. That would be six feet, would be 72. I don't know why this had a 71.5. Normally they're 72 inches, six feet. Um, so maybe that was close enough. But anyway, you, you'll take a look. But just make sure if you get one, get one with the 72 inch clearance inside, six feet. Some of them have a, even a little more than that, but that's very rare. Usually the max they'll be is, is six feet inside clearance. So if you're six foot two, you're still going to have to be hunched over, right? If you're five foot 11, like me, I'm about five, ten and a half. I can stand up inside those six foot ones. The grab rails are a little lower, right? But everywhere else I can stand up. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. The movie is starring Desi Arnaz. I think I did see it. I, I think I did see it, Kyle. I think I did see it. Yeah. Yep. I'll tell you, owning any RV, even if you get a high quality one, you know, like a Prevo or something really well built, it's still like a boat. It still requires a lot of maintenance. You need to keep on top of things. I mean, it's no joke. They're, they're not you should budget $10,000 a year. When I had my Bluebird, I budgeted $10,000 a year for maintenance. Now, I came in under that. I never spent that much. In any, any one, even any one given year, I never spent 10000 But that's what I budgeted. And so if you come in under budget, that's good, right? But I always budgeted 10000 a year for, for maintenance. And then you're, you'll be okay, <clears throat> I think. Assuming you had a good one to start with, right? If you buy a junker, you you can't you can't buy it cheap enough. I mean, you you will be buried. You you, you will just uh, when you take it to Prevo and say, "Hey, put this in top shape," they'll want you to mortgage your house, right? Uh, you you better buy one that's really a stand up vehicle, or you're going to be in deep deep. You know what? So. Um, I wanted to buy one to sell as, as bowls and smoothies from. Did you know the legality behind that? 
would I be able to park it at my house? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. It depends on the um, it depends on the uh, zoning where you are. What do you get ambulances for? Well, you could use them for a lot of things. A mobile office, which is what I would use it for primarily. Uh, use it. Some people convert them into just straight up RVs. Uh, you know, uh, some people use them as a work truck. Let's say you're a locksmith or something. It would be a great work truck. If you were a mobile mechanic, like fixing motorcycles or something, it'd be great. You could have a bunch of parts and you could pull the motorcycle right up inside and have a little lift in there and work on it and do your thing. It'd be cool. I'd say, I'd say it'd be cool. Blues in the House, a good movie. The Ice Cream Man with Clint Howard, okay. Our Wags, my thoughts are a 20% pullback in Bitcoin will be a normal correction and possibly healthy for Bitcoin, just like a stock market correction. But the saying is, the trend is your friend, 100K. Yeah, I mean, the trend seems to be up. It seems to be a lot of high net worth individuals. A lot of big money folks seem to be FOMOing in. What do you think? You think they're FOMOing in? I think that could be what's going on here. Blue's in the house. Just kidding. Uh, Daniel, it might be a question of price, and still the high beat is not a bad movement. And our wags gave Derek a thumbs up. Kyle's in the house. If GS comes out with a watch in the SoCo case with a snowflake dial this year, I'll buy it. The watch that Rich owns. Okay. Okay, got you. Um... What is a SoCo case? There we go. Uh, Tom's in the house. Uh, Craig, you saw the opportunity and potential in the Internet in its early stages, then Bitcoin, then GS. What's the next thing so other people may profit from whatever that is, too? Uh, Craig, why did you stop riding motorcycles? Okay, we'll talk about that. Tom, what's next? Um, that's a good question. I, I You know... Um, maybe it's because I'm getting older, but that I'm not really looking for what's next that much anymore as I was when I was younger. Uh, but, um, I think the Bitcoin phenomenon could, could continue for many decades and could get really interesting and it, it could swallow the real estate investment industry whole. I mean, it, it could really disrupt a lot of things. So I think I think that there's going to be there's going to be a lot going on there and so you might not need anything else right if you really embrace that all the changes that are going to happen around bitcoin there may be a lot of opportunities there I think it's going to be bigger than the internet potentially uh cuz think about it money money has to do with everything we do right Everything we do at the root is money. And if and if Bitcoin disrupts money, watch out. Why'd you stop riding motorcycles? Um I would still ride them again. I, I you know, it's at some point you get to the point where you've done something a lot and you'd enjoyed it and so on and you just kind of move on to other things. I would probably do it again, but I would probably get like a a really nice scooter, like a Remember they had those Kawasaki Bergmans? I think it was made by Kawasaki. The Bergman? Or is it Suzuki? Anyway, you know those big kind of powerful uh, scooters that ride two people that are, that are pretty nice? I'd probably get something like that and scoot around on it. Matter of fact, if I... One of the possibilities is I might spend next winter at the house down in Florida... And since I have a nice garage there and everything, I might get a scooter and put it in the garage there and then use it for, for uh, scooting around. You know, maybe a 400cc or 600cc, something like that. So you can go on the highway, uh, but you can scoot all around town and there's, you can park those a lot of places. Uh, I would probably get something like that. I don't think I'd get another full dress Harley and do touring and all of that stuff. I, I just think that's in the past for me, but, you know... I did it for 20 years, so, you know, you don't have to do stuff forever. That's that's my take on things. Kyle's in the house. Uh, is it from the SBGA 285 in the SoCo series of watches that they released last year? Okay, last year. There you go. SoCo 
uh, pieces have green second ends. There you go. So he just explained it to you. And Daniel, thank you. Okay, uh, Hunter, I'm about to put in 600 into Bitcoin. Should I wait or consider a different crypto? I wouldn't buy any other. I don't buy altcoins. Uh, personally, I only buy Bitcoin, but that's me. Will the price of BTC drop when more is released last mined? Uh, they didn't produce all 20. Yes, but the problem is the, the buyers are buying more than is produced. The, the, the supply is constrained. Uh, there is not enough supply for the demand. That's why the price is going up, supply and demand. So, yeah, they, they are producing 6.25 Bitcoin every 10 minutes, but the problem is buyers want more than that. That's the issue we're running into right now. That's why the price is going up. Kyle's in the house. Craig, what year will one Satoshi equal one US day, USD? That is what we need would make everything easy. I don't know if that's going to happen, though. I, uh, Well, I mean, eventually the USD will be totally worthless, so it won't matter. If one Satoshi equaled one USD, then the Satoshi would be worthless too, right? So, I mean, I think we need to take think in terms of what you can buy with your Bitcoin, the buying power that your Bitcoin's going to have 20 years from now. We shouldn't think in terms of what it will be worth in comparison to the USD, because USD is probably going to be worthless by then. But if you're looking at today's purchasing power, when will one Satoshi equal one USD as far as today's purchasing power? That would be a pretty high market cap for Bitcoin. I haven't done the calculation, but that would be a high, pretty high market cap. But it, it's possible it could get there in, in maybe 20 years. Because there's a lot of money invested in real estate that could be shifted over to Bitcoin. A lot of people that have parked money in, um, in real estate uh, might very well uh, want to move that money into Bitcoin because it's a lot easier. You're not paying taxes every year on real estate, all that kind of nonsense. So that's very possible. Daniel Lee, people may be foaming into BTC so they can buy a ticket to Mars with Elon. There you go. Lance Craig, are you still going to do a motorcycle trip on Route 66 like Carlos suggested? I don't know. But I don't know. It's possible. Uh, Stig's in the house. Craig has a new drinking glass something. Yeah, I, I broke. I still have one of the glasses with the flag on it, but I broke the other one. I knocked it over and broke it the other day. So, I'm getting clumsy. That's the, you get clumsy in your old age. I didn't have my glasses on. I couldn't see, you know, I knocked the thing over. There you go. That's what you guys have to look look to look forward to. Um, Tom's in the house. Is the 2 through one dire, uh, diver feeling left out like the 005 did before you sold it? I'm still wearing the 231 a lot. <laughs> so, no, it's not a redheaded stepchild. It's not being ignored. It's It's being worn a lot. The only way I will stop wearing that a lot is if somebody steps up and buys it. Then I'll be forced to start wearing the 002 all the time. But as it is now, I'm not wearing the 002 all the time. I'm wearing it as a specialty watch when I dress up and go out or whatever, which I don't do as often with COVID, you know, but hopefully that's going to change here in the next couple months. Hopefully things will start getting back to normal. I'll be able to go out and meet with clients more often and all that. Uh, then I'd be wearing this more, right? But as it is... I'm wearing the 231 a lot, a lot, most of the time, actually. Let's see, Kyle, we all need to do that trip. Lance, you need to come too. There you go. Can I join the Route 66 trip? Blue. Well, yeah, of course you could. Kyle's in the house. We will set. What would be cool is if I get the ambulance, maybe I could give everybody an escort with the ambulance. Okay. Ambulance. How do you pronounce it? Anyway, uh, <clears throat> Kyle's in the house. We will set uh, 20K, 200K BTC t as the target for the trip. We do the Route 66 trip when BTC is above 200K. Whoa. Yeah, that'd be pretty wild. 
That'd be pretty wild. Can the dog man join the trip? Sure, I'd let the dog man join the trip. I mean, you know, maybe he's not as big a jerk in person as he is on the airwaves. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he's not a total jerk in person. What do you think? Now, he probably is. Anyway, Lance is in the house. Kyle, uh, <clears throat> if there is one, I would definitely go. I thought all Wrench Gang members were invited blue. Yes. I sure hope so. The inner circle of Wrench Gang. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kyle says, Leslie won't be happy if the ambulance is filled with escorts. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Am I supposed to bring the entertainment also? Is that how this is, this whole thing is working? <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Um, Tom says, would you like me to look after your house in Florida during the humid summer months when you're not using it? <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, it's nice down there, even in the summer, it really is. All right, it's 612. We've been going for about an hour. Uh, so we're going to have to wrap this puppy up pretty soon. Stig says, uh, Tom, if you look closely, you will see that the 231 is fully charged. And as long as this is the case, we do not have to worry. Craig still loves it. Yeah, it, and the funny thing about it is it does not take much wrist time for that thing to stay charged up. It's very efficient. It is more efficient. The winding mechanism in that is more efficient than any Rolex I've ever had. I mean, it, it does not take much to keep that puppy topped off. Uh, let's see. Are you and Leslie both still enjoying your Rolex? That'll be a good question. Um and Blue says, no, wait, no, please, no, no. Oh, he doesn't want the show to end. Da Daniel Lee is in the house. If anything, BTC probably isn't mooning because of groups, F2 poolers, but it's probably a good thing it doesn't ex explode. Okay. Yes, Tom, very much. Um, Ethereum to the moon, says Tony. Yeah, well, you know how we can tell that... Um, we can tell that we're still very early on the Bitcoin thing is that people are still buying altcoins, right? That's how you can tell it's still early days. I mean, people are not educated enough to realize that the altcoins are total scams and a lot of people are losing money on those things. A few people are making money, right? But a lot of people are losing money and people don't realize that Ethereum will never work and that it, it's, it's a scam as well. And so it's going to take time for people to get educated and realize what's going on. And then we'll see the, these altcoins die away and die off. And then Bitcoin can really take off and really do its things because people won't be distracted by all the nonsense. Right now, people go on to Coinbase to buy Bitcoin and then they see these other cheaper coins, right? And they think, oh, I'll buy these, right? Because they're going to go up more because Bitcoin's already gone up and it's too late to buy Bitcoin and all this nonsense, right? And they buy these altcoins and then they get burned and some of them don't come back, right? And so there's a time, people have to go through an educational process to where they finally realize that Bitcoin is the way to go. And then they, then they just start going in on Bitcoin. And that's going to take a while. It could be 10 years uh, for people to come around and realize that um, that these these altcoins are not here to stay, and Ethereum is the oil of crypto. Yeah, it's oil of something. Uh, it's oiling up people's back ends so that they can be taken. Right? That's what Ethereum's doing. Yeah, it it makes no sense. The whole the whole project makes no sense, and and now they've realized it makes no sense. So they're coming out with Ethereum 2.0 that's been delayed for years, and it's a total you know what show and um and that's not going to work either so yeah it's a mess uh derek says someone call in uh cardano is giving eth the run for their money yeah the, yeah all those things can they can all give each other a race for the for the bottom <laughs> all right folks we're gonna wrap wrap it up wrap this puppy up thanks for tuning in and blue says brie call in <laughs> One last, one last ditch effort. I don't blame him. I don't blame him for that. 
Hopefully we'll be back again soon. And hey, message Steve, email Steve, ask him to do some more shows. Come on, he's got his setup at his house. Why isn't he doing some shows? Megan's in the house. <laughs> Hi, Megan. <laughs> Hi, Megan. And goodbye, Megan. <laughs> You're here just in time for the wrap up. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> That's great. <laughs>